but microbiota has been linked with chronic diseases such as obesity and diabetes in humans. However, demonstrating causality between microbiota and specific diseases remains a challenge. Many people say bacteria are single cellular organisms, but actually they exist as populations. So one population is a group of bacterial cells derived from one single parent cell. So they are genetically identical. So there's such a group of cells is called one population. If you isolate them into pure culture, you call it a string. So one string in bacteria is just like one individual in human. In the 1880s, four criteria were established by German doctor Robert Koch to identify the causative agents of a particular disease, including the microorganism or other pathogen must be present in all cases of the disease. The pathogen can be isolated from the diseased host and grown in a pure culture. Using this conceptual framework, scientists at Shanghai Jiao Tong University are trying to determine the causative bacteria in the human gut microbiota for obesity and chronic disease. Well, this is a really a hot topic now. It's just because we have a huge amount of bacteria living in our gut and many uh, hundreds of uh, species. And they, when they grow in our gut, they produce various uh, the so-called bioactive compounds. Some are beneficial, some are uh, toxic or detrimental. So all these bioactive compounds can get into our bloodstream so they can impact our health. Diet is the major force shaping the gut microbiota composition. Scientists at Shanghai Jiao Tong University have developed a diet based on whole grains, traditional Chinese medicinal foods and prebiotics called the WTP diet. In a hospital intervention trial, children with Prader-Willem syndrome and children with simple obesity were placed on the WTP diet. Both groups experienced significant weight loss. We found that the significant contribution of the gut microbiota, uh, of the dysbiotic gut microbiota in the development of both genetic and diet-related obesity. Even genetic obesity, uh, we show that you can change the gut microbiome and uh, correct the disease. And the reason is because some members of the gut microbiota, they produce toxins and those toxins are contributing to the disease. Metabolomic profiling of urine showed diet-induced overall changes of host metabotypes and identified significantly reduced trimethylamine, enoxide and edoxyl sulfate. Host bacteria co-metabolites known to induce metabolic deteriorations. To compare the capacity of the gut microbiota to induce the metabolic deteriorations, before and after intervention, we transplanted the uh, pre- and post-intervention gut microbiota from the same Prandtl-Willi syndrome children to the germ-free mice. We found that the pre-intervention gut microbiota induced the higher inflammation and the larger adipositis in the uh, notobiotic mouse compared with the uh, post-intervention gut microbiota from the same volunteer. Multi-omics-based system analysis indicates a significant contribution of gut microbiota to both genetic and simple obesity in children and could lead to the development of a targeted therapy. In our school, we have the state key lab of microbial metabolism. That means there are a lot of advanced technology is here for our research. And our research is based on massive, da massive data, usually terabyte size. Now here, we are in the High Performance Center of Shanghai Jiao Tong University. The cluster named Pi is the number one in China Ministry of Education and the speed of it is up to 380 teaflops. A second study showed that opportunistic pathogen Enterobacter cloci B29 isolated from the gut of an obese human causes obesity in germ-free mice. The endotoxin producing Enterobacter decreased in relative abundance from 35% of the volunteer's gut bacteria to non-detectable levels, during which time the volunteer lost 51.4 kilograms of 174.8 kilograms initial weight and recovered from hyperglycemia and hypertension after 23 weeks on the WTP diet. In the future, we should work at the string level 
and identify all the relevant members and then in animal model to uh, understand the molecular mechanism. Only after this rigorous study, we can identify the important members of the gut microbiome. And because it's at the string level, you know the genome, you know their genes, so you can develop tools, use those bacteria as biomarkers for disease diagnosis, for example, for evaluating progress of a disease treatment. And it's also possible when you identify all the really contributing strains, you can use them as targets for intervention, for treatment or prevention.